website lead by example training.com uh we're gonna go over the three videos i've created and this goes into i go into some player development and uh on ice drills i go into some power play stuff and then i created this new one uh you can say importance of an F3 on a forecheck or just importance of being able to forecheck and go from offense from a forecheck to creating offense very quickly. So I have three videos here. Well, did it? I don't know. If I, okay, hold on. Hold on. Okay, like I was saying, I just didn't publish them. Uh, I have three videos here. And we are going to watch each one and kind of just break it down. So most basic four checks, how a lot of teams run it, it can be a magnitude of things. I don't think any team in the NHL runs a the same four check for uh, every single shift throughout the game. I think it is a lot based off of where the puck is positioned, where the uh, opposing team has their side, like where they're going to look to go out. And also how many numbers the forecheck has in the zone already. So as you can tell, Florida has three players in the zone. So they're right now it looks like they're running just a really like basic two one two. So they got kind of too hard on the puck, and then they have this third guy who's going to stay high and stay middle, and then they have two D at the blue line most likely. We have Barkov going at the puck, and then we have Verhage closing in on the other side. Taking away this side and this side change here to the D is Barkov. He does a good job, holds the wall, takes it away. Then the puck goes up the wall here, and Verhage now automatically attacks. Now Giroux is the most important player here. He's the third guy high, and he's making sure this puck doesn't get out. It's a bad pass. It's behind the player. Giroux does a good job, stops on the puck, locates the puck, pushes it back down into the zone, and then they get offense from there. So they're just you can just watch it, and I just kind of – every single video that I record, I just kind of replay it three or four times just so you can see it. And when you watch these videos, you can kind of tell, like, the what we're trying to go over here. So, again, Florida has two guys going hard at the puck. There's no real possession here. You would call this a forecheck because no one really has possession. And Florida's in their offensive zone with no possession. Tampa's in their D zone trying to get the puck out. So Florida's forechecking to get possession of the puck, and they're trying to now create some offense. They have two guys on the puck, two guys below the goal line. And the most important thing that you could you should see here is there this number nine Bennett, he's not moving. He's trying to read and react where the play is gonna go, and then he'll start to move. So he's trying to see what's going to happen, and then he's going to move. Because if the puck moves here, he can go. If the puck moves here, he can go. If the puck stays here, he's in a great op spot for this puck now, right? And the puck pops out right to him, and he gets that shot on net. You know, maybe if Vasilevsky isn't quick to react, that's a goal in the back of the net. So what I really kind of want to focus on here is this importance of what I would call – F3 in the middle of the ice. So you're not too low and you're being able to position yourself that if the puck changes sides, I can be that first guy to the puck. And then my two other guys on the forecheck can kind of reload and kind of figure out what they're going to do. Okay, closest to the puck would be two, furthest to the puck would be three. Simple things like that. For some reason, I showed this clip like 19 times. Okay, again, we got the forecheck going on here. Ball comes into the zone, throws a shot on net. Bennett comes down, picks up the puck. Florida has possession of the puck. Tampa doesn't. Tampa's in the offensive zone, so they're going to forecheck and get possession back. They forecheck. They go too hard on the puck. Look where 17 is. He's not moving to one side. He's not going strong side he's not too high and he's not too low he's in a great position middle of the ice where if this puck bounces out to him look where it comes right to him they get a one-timer on net this is the perfect scenario of the importance of this f3 in the middle of the ice so watch it again 
Ball comes in, shot. Bennett goes. We go too hard on the puck, right? Closing out one way, pushing them up one way. We have the puck. F3 is in a perfect position to be right in position to counterattack for them to get a shot on net and create some offense off that forecheck now. Only have one clip here, but we have the Rangers now, and you can tell McDonough is kind of trying to see what he's going to do. It takes a little bit of a weird angle to the puck. Kreider goes hard and is pushing him up the wall now. So he's kind of pushing him up the wall, and you have this F2 here who's going to close out right here along and support, and then you'll see F3 kind of – Figure out what he's going to do. Am I going to go? Am I going to – do we have possession? What can I do? If he has possession, he could pop to the goal line and be a support there, or he can stay here. But they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. F3, again, middle of the ice, supporting high, supporting through the middle of the ice. Puck ends up coming right to him in a perfect chance to score that goal. So we'll watch one more time. Puck gets stumped in. Crowder goes hard one. We got F2 now coming in, support, close out. They throw a really bad pass. F3 is there to pick it off. So watch this. We got two on two. We got their guy supporting right here. 71, bad pass by 27, who's looking to go to 71 here. But great position by Zabanajad to be that F3 through, F3 through the middle of the ice, gets the puck, gets a great A scoring chance. We'll watch a couple more. So Puck ends up getting into the zone. I don't know why the video did this, but Puck was here. Phil Kessel ends up supporting high as that F2. Then you'll notice this F3 right here come in support through the middle of the ice for Phil Kessel on the wall. Supports, they push it up to their D, and they get some offense off that forecheck. And what you would call this forecheck would be a one, two, one. I mean, one, two, two in a sense, maybe. They go one hard. They have one supporting here. Or you can call this a two, one, two. Like, I, the thing with forecheck is it doesn't matter what type of forecheck you run. You have to be able to communicate to your players that, look, at the end of the day, we're trying to force their team to make a mistake. How are we going to do that? Whether it's one guy going after the puck, two guys going after the puck, check to see how much support you have. Check to see how many players on your team you have in the zone check to see how many players they have in the zone is it 2d to r3 forwards are they on a change are we on a change like those are the type of things you have to recognize if you're a forward going into the four check and arizona recognizes that they have support coming in where you know we basically have all five players in our offensive zone but we don't have possession of the puck so we're going to four check 2 2 does a good job by just kind of forcing this play up the wall phil kessel's right there Guy comes and helps him and supports the middle of the ice. They push it to their D. They get a shot on net. I'm not going to show that one anymore. Here's again the lightning. They go Kucherov hard on the puck. Goalie comes out to play it, but Kucherov goes hard hard on the puck. They have another guy support right here. And then, look, Stamkos is that F3 through the middle of the ice. They rec He recognizes that they have possession of the puck, so he's going to go through the middle of the ice. He's not going to go low because they already have two guys low. He's going to go through the middle of the ice just in case a mistake happens. He can be that first guy back on the back check. I'm going to skip through this one. Um, this is just a really quickly highlight. Like what ended up happening was what ends up happening again, puck was kind of pushed into the lightning D zone, their D come back and get it. He kind of crawls up the wall here. 86 pushes him up the wall, forces a puck here. Then we have a guy close out their D ends up picking it up. And then we have this, F3 through the middle of the ice, reloading, getting through the middle, and being a nice threat through the middle of the ice with that shot deflection on his backhand. So uh, just a big thing to recognize with this is once your team gets position, how quickly are you transitioning to offense? So once the Hurricanes get position of the puck, 
they quickly transition to offense. They get a guy in the middle of the ice. They get a guy on the back door. Like there's just in that 0.2 seconds, they're going from four check to offense. This is one of my favorite ones that I'm about to show you. I saved it for the last. Yeah, and I don't know why I showed this clip 19 times. All right. So, Carolina on the forecheck. Possession of the puck, Tampa. D zone. Offensive zone is Carolina. Go one hard at the puck. Force them up the wall. Trying to eliminate these breakouts through the middle of the ice. Trying to eliminate side changes. Trying to eliminate going from strong to weak side, like a side change. So, force them up the wall. Once we go up the wall, 2 1 closes out on that support. His back is to the play. He has no idea what's behind him. He tries this chip through the middle. And then you look what you have. Look where 12 comes from. Eric Stahl comes from. Jordan Stahl, I'm sorry. 11 comes from. Look where he comes from. He comes from below the goal line through the middle of the ice. There's no egg, crazy route he takes here. He literally goes from goal line through the middle, and he just intercepts this puck and gets a good chance on that. And this is all from guys just doing their job. Like, really, at the end of the day, it's just like guys keeping the game simple. Force up the wall, close out on the wall come through the middle, intercept, get the puck, and then look how quickly they go from defense to offense. Forecheck to offense. So just I'm going to quickly show this video and kind of talk. Like I make these videos to hopefully just educate some coaches on forecheck. You know, I think watching hockey is the easiest way for also kids to learn. So like if you're watching these type of videos and you're a young athlete, you're a young hockey player, anywhere from 12 or 11 to, you know, 20 plus years old, these type of things are really what's going to help you improve your hockey IQ, improve your hockey awareness, improve your anticipation. Like a lot of these plays are created just from anticipation, guys anticipating plays, being able to like think ahead of the game a little bit. So I make these videos with that intention. So hopefully you're learning something. And if you ever want your video or your, you know, games broken down, down shifts broken down you can always reach out to me at lead by example training one at gmail.com it's on my website somewhere um so if you ever need videos broken down games broken down of you in a game if you're 12 plus years old feel free to reach out i love to do it 